Hi, this is Dr. Nick Nickam. Welcome to Permanent Pacemaker Insertion. Here is a quick overview of the pacemaker. The pacemaker has a power supply which is known as the battery which is very small and it goes underneath the skin. And to this pacemaker battery is connected a wire that goes into the vein and it traverses all the way into the main veins then into the right atrium and into the tip of the right ventricle. There are times when we may have more than one wire placed inside the heart chambers. In this picture we have one wire going straight into the ventricular apex. There is another wire which is uh, in the right atrium. Here there are two wires. One here there are two wires. The one in the atrium activates the atrial chambers while the wire in the ventricle activates both ventricles. This procedure is performed in a cardiac catheterization lab under sterile conditions. Here is a, another example of a, a pacemaker. As you can see, here is the battery which is connected to a wire and that wire goes into the main vein or the subclavian vein and from there it enters the right atrium where it may be anchored to the right atrial wall or it is placed in the right ventricular apex. Most of the wires are located on the right side of the heart. What are the indications for a pacemaker? The most common indications for a pacemaker are slow heart rate or a heart block in the electrical conduction system. Sometimes pacemakers are also indicated for patients with severe heart failure where making the ventricles beat in synchrony would improve the patient's symptoms. The fourth condition in which we might put a pacemaker along with what is called a defibrillator or the one that shocks the heart, uh, that one shocks the heart if it goes into ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation and that is known as the defibrillator. So the defibrillator not only has the ability to shock when a patient develops a fatal arrhythmia, but it also has the capability to pace the atria or the ventricle or both of them depending upon the type of the device that is uh, put in place. Let's look at uh, some different types of uh, pacemakers. As you can see, there are three different pacemakers uh, and they do serve different purposes. As uh, it is shown here, there is attachment to one pacemaker wire that means you can only put one wire which in all cases is put into the right ventricular apex. More often we use what is known as the dual chamber pacemaker or a pacemaker which has two wires one of which is anchored to the atrial muscle the other one is a place at the tip of the right ventricle. Pacemaker has the capability to pace the atria and wait for certain delay and then pace the ventricles as and when it is needed. And this is the third type of uh, pacemaker which has three wires. And this is most commonly used in patients with severe heart failure and with conduction disturbances where a third wire is placed in the vein behind the left ventricle so that the both ventricles contract at the same time, uh, thus improving the overall heart function. Let's talk a little bit about uh, pacemaker insertion. As I mentioned to you earlier, the pacemaker insertion is performed under sterile conditions in the cardiac catheterization lab or sometimes in the operating room. Usually the left or the right shoulder is cleaned with the antiseptic solution and sterile drapes are applied over the shoulder area. The area right below the clavicle is exposed where a small incision is made here just below the clavicle measuring about two inches and through this incision a needle is inserted into the vein and once the vein is secured a guide wire is passed into the vein and through the guide wire a sheet is introduced. Through the sheet various pacemaker electrodes like the ones uh, that are shown in the previous slide are inserted 
and positioned in the right atrium and the right ventricular apex. And once these electrodes are placed, they are tested to make sure that the position is good and the electrode is able to identify the electrical impulse coming from the heart and also be able to pace the ventricle so that the ventricular muscles can contract. When all these parameters are measured and appear to be satisfied, the electrodes are connected to the battery and the battery is placed underneath the chest muscle or the pectoralis muscle and the skin and the subcutaneous tissue are sutured together. When the pacemaker procedure is completed, after it has completely healed well, this is how it would look. It would look like a small bulge in the chest wall and you can see some of the wire protruding underneath the skin which is uh, uh, going into the heart for pacing. So the pacemaker procedure generally takes anywhere from an hour to two to three hours depending upon the extensiveness of the pacemaker. If you are just putting a simple one wire pacemaker, it may probably take about 45 minutes to an hour. After that, you return to your room and you take rest. Generally, there is no general anesthesia involved in putting pacemakers. We do it under local anesthetic and also the patients are given light sedation during the procedure. There are several questions that people always have when they have a pacemaker. Is this pacemaker going to go off when you are in the airport security check? Yes, the pacemaker is going to signal that there is a metal and you're going to be called to the site. The best thing is to carry your identity card and explain to them that you have a pacemaker and hopefully they would be courteous enough to recognize this and uh, deal with it appropriately. Similarly, patients who have pacemakers may have problem getting MRIs. However, the newer types of MRI machines are able to perform uh, the test even if there is a pacemaker in place. The third situation where people are concerned about is microwaves. Generally, the modern pacemakers are so well shielded, there is very little chance for the microwaves to interfere with the cardiac capabilities of the pacemaker. Another situation where the pacemaker may be interfered uh, is during surgery when they use the electric cautery in and around the area. When such is the case, we generally either turn off the pacemaker temporarily during the procedure or try to use other means of uh, performing the surgery without interrupting the rhythm in case the patient is completely dependent on the pacemaker. P when patients have pacemakers, uh, they are generally followed by the cardiologist every three to six months. Uh, the battery generally lasts anywhere from six to ten years and the pacemaker must be checked on the pa every six months to a year to make sure that the pacemaker is uh, functioning adequately, the electrical thresholds are within reasonable limits and the patient is not having any malfunction of the pacemaker. When it gets close for the pacemaker uh, to be replaced, generally the pacemaker uh, ch company will check it and let us know how much lifespan is left as far as the battery is concerned in terms of months. So it is advisable to replace the battery if the lifespan is less than three months. This is in a nutshell about pacemaker, different types of pacemakers, pacemaker insertion procedure and follow-up after pacemaker insertion. Thank you for your attention.